Well, good morning. Not too bad this morning. Um, it is a pleasure to be with you, um, to be able to share. John Mark asked if I would be willing to take one of these Sundays, and so this is the Sunday um, that I get to be a part of this series. And as you've already heard, we're talking about the idea of image. And if you think about it, image is pretty important to us. Uh, And when I say image, I'm talking about the idea of the way that we present ourselves to others and how other people perceive us is our image. And that's a really big thing, and rightfully so. I mean, think about it. If you are going in on a job interview, you want to present yourself very well and for them to have a good um, perception of you because you want the job. Image is important. Maybe um, you were invited to a special dinner, a business dinner, and like one of the first questions is, Is it formal, casual, business casual? Like, how am I supposed to dress? Because again, we don't want to show up and stand out. We want to be there and make sure we fit in and have a present ourselves in a positive light. If you're dating that girl or special guy and the first time you're meeting the parents, you definitely want to have that good impression. Image is important. We even have a little saying in our um, society. You can finish it for me. Um, If... You never get a second chance to make a first impression, right? We understand that concept, that image is important to us. And it isn't a new phenomenon. Um, You can go all the way back to 1990, back so far ancient ago. There was the camera company Canon was introducing a brand new type of camera called the Rebel. And this ad campaign that they started, they chose this young up-and-coming tennis phenom by the name of Andre Agassi, and the tagline was, image is everything. And you may remember the commercials and everything, but that was their ad. And actually, it was the most popular ad campaign that Canon Cameras has ever done with this tagline, image is everything. Image is everything to us today. And if you look at social media, image and the way we present ourselves is a very big deal. The research firm Relatable um, did a study on Instagram and found that out of all the photos that are posted on Instagram, 18% of them have some kind of filter, some kind of modification, way that they've altered the picture before you post it. 18%. But what's really interesting they found is that if those pictures are selfies, that number jumps up to over 25% have some kind of filter, that we've changed our hair color or eye color, made us look skinnier or tan or whatever it may be. But we make sure that when we post something, a picture about ourselves, that there is some way that we have tried to put ourselves in the most positive light we can because we know What people see about us, what we post, influences and impacts what they think about us because our image is important. And it can become so important to us that we sometimes can become obsessed with it and it can be even unhealthy that we work so hard at presenting our image to the world and that we've almost created this fictional type version of ourselves because it's like this idealized version of who we wish we are or want to be, or at least what we want other people to think of us as. And so we work really hard at presenting this image and work really hard at maintaining it. And it can become somewhat of an unhealthy thing for us. But that doesn't mean that image is not important. It is. And I would even say this morning that your image is important to God. How you present yourself and how others perceive you is very important to God. So let's look together this morning at Genesis chapter one. Um, I won't read it all. 
because John Mark helped us out with that last week. So we're going to jump right to verse 27. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 says this. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So we see here in Scripture clearly that both man and woman are created in the image of God. Now, throughout history, there have been a lot of debates between scholars and theologians on what exactly that means to be created in God's image and in his likeness. Some scholars even delineate those two words and say image is one thing, likeness is another thing, and there's debate on what qualities are included and what qualities aren't. For example, we are rational beings. We have the ability to use our brains and reason and use logic. That's an aspect of being created in the image of God. We have the capacity for relationship, to love and to be loved. Again, a part of being in the image of God, that we have imagination and creativity and can express that in so many different ways is an aspect of being created in the image of God. And we could go on and on, and there's lots of debate, again, what the qualities are that are included in that and what are not. And if that's something you're interested in and would love to jump into that and dive deep, John Mark would love to have that conversation with you. Um, yeah, and so it's, it's an ongoing idea. And so we're not going to go there this morning as much as the idea of we are created in his image. If, if you read through the Genesis account, every day of creation, when it comes to humanity, there is this phrase that is different and not placed in Scripture or anywhere else, except for here, when God creates man and woman, he creates them in his image, which sets humanity apart from the rest of creation. It makes humanity unique and special in a way, in how they relate to God. Yes, we are a part of creation, but yet at the same time, we are unique in all of creation. And so that means humanity has a special place in God's creation. Humanity is very special and important and unique to God. You are very special and unique and important to God. Being created in the image of God means you have great worth and value and significance just as you are. From the foundation of the world, the beginning of time, your value as a person was established by God himself. So your worth your value, your importance, your significance is not based on your accomplishments. Your importance and your value is not based on your talent, your abilities, how good you are, or even your popularity or the size of your bank account. Your worth and your value is established by God because he has imprinted his image upon you, and that's what makes you significant. That's what makes you worthy. And some of us, I think, this morning need to maybe just sit there in that truth and allow that to wash over us. That we have a sense of freedom in this truth that I don't have to perform in order for God to love me. That there's not this standard that I have to achieve for God's acceptance to come my way. Man, if I can just be good enough, then maybe his favor will come my direction. It is not based upon you or what you do at all. God says, I have created you in my image and you have worth and value just as you are. And there is freedom in that. It's also true, if, if God has created all of mankind in his image, then every person that you meet also has great worth and value as well. Every encounter you have is someone who's created in the image of God, and they are worthy of dignity and respect. Even if... They're that overbearing boss that has all these um, unreasonable expectations on you. Even if it's that bully at school or maybe it's that absentee or distant parent. Or maybe it's those people who live on the wrong side of town. Or maybe those that are on the other side of the political aisle from you. 
Every single person is created in the image of God and worthy of dignity and respect, including the inmate sitting in jail, including that teenager that walks in the door with tattoos and a nose ring, including the homeless man on the street corner, even the young person who says they're gay. Every single person is created in the image of God and worthy of respect and dignity. And I realize what I just said. Every single person, from young to old and everything in between, has worth and value because they have been imprinted with the very image of God. And as we understand that more fully, what that means to be imprinted with the image of God, the very next thing that we see in the Genesis account, looking at verse 28, it says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Roll over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. It's interesting if you think, after this divine act of creation of humanity, making them special and unique and imprinting his image upon them, the first words out of God's mouth to his creation, to mankind, is what? I want you to increase and fill the earth. The very first words of God to humanity is to increase and fill the earth after being created in his image. What God says to them is this, you are to take my image, my name, and spread it among the earth. You are to take my love and fill the earth with it. You are to take my compassion and fill the earth. You are to take my name, my glory, my renown, and fill the earth. That is the very essence of the command that God gives humanity from the very beginning, that you have my image that you bear my resemblance, my name. Now take that and fill the earth. And if we really think about it, isn't that the consistent theme throughout all of Scripture? Isn't that the foundational idea of the covenant with Abraham? I'm going to make you into a great nation to increase you, and then your people will be a symbolic representation of how I will relate to the world. Isn't that what the covenant of Abraham is about? Isn't that what the Great Commission is about? You are to be my disciples and go and make more that you are to take my name and fill the earth in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth? Isn't that what we see in Revelation? This idea that every tribe and tongue and nation will be there glorifying Jesus from the very beginning of time to eternity future, this idea that God has that we are to bear his image, his name, and to fill the earth with his glory. And the more we understand that that is the consistent theme throughout scripture, I think it begins to show more and more light on different aspects of scripture. I think it starts to help us to understand maybe a little bit more of why in the 10 commandments, the second commandment, God says, don't make any images because he already has. In you and in me, God has already created his image in us that we are to be his symbolic representation to the world. He's already done it. So he said, you don't need to do that. I think it also begins to shed a little light on Genesis chapter 11, the story of the Tower of Babel. I'll be honest with you, when I was younger, I always struggled with why that was a negative example in the Bible. Because, I mean, it's a bunch of people coming together, teamwork, cooperation, that sounds good. And they want to build a tower to God. They're trying to get closer to God. That sounds good. I mean, if you think about it, it's kind of like the first church, people working together, trying to reach God. I'm like, that sounds like a good thing. Like, I, I don't understand why it's a negative example in the Bible but understanding this idea of God imprinting us with his image and filling the earth with his image, I think can shed some light because if you look at Genesis 11, verse four of the story of the Tower of Babel, it says this. 
Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens. And here's the important part. So that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Did you hear it? Their motivation was in direct opposition and defiance from the very foundational idea of what God intended humanity to be about. They said, we want to make our name famous and stay right here where we are. When God's original intent and purpose and mission from the very beginning was, no, you're to make my name famous and fill the earth. And that command that he gave to Adam and Eve in the very beginning is still true for us today. We are to be his image bearer and fill the earth. We are to take his name and be an accurate representation of who he is and fill the earth. So whatever piece of earth that you get to experience, at school, at work, in your family, your neighborhood, fill the earth with his name and his renown. Be that accurate reflection of his image. Be the image bearer you were created to be. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your amazing plan from the very beginning of how it was your design and purpose and mission from the beginning to use us, your creation, to fill this earth with your glory. Yes, God, our image is important, not because of what we do, but because it's your image in us. So God, would you help us to live a life that accurately reflects who you are And we fill our earth around us each and every day, whatever that looks like for us, that we are filling it with your glory, for your name and your renown, and not for ourselves. It's in your name, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. As we close today, let's stand together.